Thank you very, very much for coming. It's, it's lovely to see you all here today. Uh, we're, just gonna, we're just sort of going to question each other about yes. ourselves. No, um, to sort of ask questions um, to each other, and then we'll open the floor up to um, questions um, at the end. Uh, but first of all, I think it would be good because to start, this plays 19 years old now, yeah. I think. Uh, 19 years old now, and it's got an extraordinary... Um, production history and an extraordinary history of, of versions of it, uh, um, with all, with all sorts of different different um, elements to it, which is very exciting. So I don't know if you want to yes. tell us a bit about how it first came about and then the subsequent history of it. Yes, well, it was originally a commission from the Women's Theatre Company, which had just changed their name to Sphinx, um, and they wanted a play, and they were a company deliberately set up. I think they started in the 1970s. I know. Uh, to uh, make parts, roles for women. It was all part of the women's liberation movement. And they asked me, it was a very, they thought it was a great idea. So it wasn't my idea to write a play about the first English actresses. And it would be a play for, initially, four women, because that's what they could afford as a company. Although I, did, I just wrote a play for five women because I couldn't write it before. And I just cheated and gave it to them because I knew they would never say, we can't do this. <laughs> It'd be too late. It's a fait accompli. Uh, yeah, so, and, but uh, over the years, as Mike was saying, then um, that was in 1997. And, no, 1993. And in 1997, the, the old Vic were doing a season um, and with Peter Hall, and they were doing nine new plays and nine classics. So it was a massive sort of season. I know, it seems incredible, doesn't it? And they said, would you do Playhouse Creatures? But, you know, could you make it, you know, could you put some men in it? And I went, um, I was really sort of, uh, I, I said yes, because I never said no to anything. Of course, we could do my play, I'll do anything. And so there was a version then with three men in it, uh, which is the Earl of Rochester, uh, a poet called Mr... Uh, Otway, he was a, a writer, a restoration writer, and someone else. I can't remember who the third Mrs. person Barry. was. Oh, there was Mrs. Mrs. Barry. So it was two men and another, mm. another actress. Yeah. So then it had that life, and then um, and then someone else, I can't remember. Oh, then there were other versions where people didn't want the men. People, the men weren't very popular, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> and I think that's right. I think it really, in its heart, it's a play yes. about women and, there is and a the theatre. Six-woman version as well. Isn't and then there? there was a six-woman version because people said, yeah. "Well, we, we we quite like the new woman you've written, but we don't like the men. So we we'll get rid of the men and have five women." And so it sort of has had a kind of quite a. And even this version has a, a new, yeah, little. Yeah, isn't the, completely the first version, is it? No. It's got a, what, Michael, I mean, you might want half, to say something about that. Half of what we did was, um, I, I met April in the British Library, and um, I was like, gosh, the, gosh, it's, it's, are we going to do the five-woman version, the original version? But the difference is, there's so many brilliant scenes and little additions and um, all sorts of um, trims and extra bits in the other versions. Would it be all right to sort of do a truncated version of, of all the others? And April said, yes, absolutely, go for it. So, which I was just like, thank you so much. And, um, and uh, we, so then what I did one Saturday afternoon, I sat with all the different versions on my table at home in London and with a computer and sort of did a new five-woman version, but with all the other bits that I loved from the eight-person version and the six-woman version. And then I even wrote a line, very audaciously, um, but April kept that in, which is very nice. Um, I won't tell you what it is. Um, it's not very good. It's not very good. It isn't it's very like good. It's not like April's line. It's very true. No, it's, it's very true. Seriously, every time I hear it, I cringe. Um, but, um, it goes past really fast. Yeah, thank God. Um, and, um, and so, and so we've, we've got this current version. And then April came to the read-through uh, four weeks ago and um, just said, oh, I don't like that, but I'm going to rewrite it. I was like, no, it's like, no, I'm going to rewrite it. And then within two hours, I had a whole, it's a whole scene, it's a speech, basically, towards the end of the play that had been completely rewritten for our version. Um, and so for those of you that have seen it, or those of you that may be coming tonight, this is, this is the only time that, so far that this new, this new bit has, has been in it. So it's, so it's sort of... It's um, a Frankenstein of a play, yes, isn't it? it? Yeah, so but it, I think it, it is almost... It is, it is largely the first version in yeah, it's Maine. Very much it's very, it is the original, really, mm. isn't it? With those um, five... Very ensemble that first version, and, and, and which is fantastic. And so it's just five really brilliant, meaty, juicy parts for, for, for girls, which is just fantastic. So that's sort of the appeal, really, of it hugely. 
Shall I say something about the actress, the whole yeah. subject of yes, how it was, it was, was um, when I was given the, the commission, I didn't really realise that there wasn't much material about the first actresses because nobody was writing it down. And um, so you'd think, great, I'll go and get some books out. And then they say, well, there aren't any books. <laughs> or there, there was subsequently one fantastic book by Elizabeth Howe um, called The First English Actresses. But that was kind of... I didn't get hold of that straight away, that book. It's quite a new book. And also, I didn't know things like Nell Gwynn is in the play. I'm sure you might know that anyway. But um, I didn't know that she'd been an actress. I knew her as being the king's mistress, an orange seller to the king's mistress. That's what we know. That's what she's in folklore and everything. But missing out the best bit about her, really, which was she was this incredibly popular actress, and so that bit had been completely hidden from history. And I think that was yes. really, became really important in the play yeah. that to bring out this history that had been sort of just forgotten. And that amazing journey, which is the real life Nell Gwynn, from the gutter to having her son being the Duke of St Albans, that, you know, the best title in the land other than king or prince, the Duke of St Albans. And, you know, the, there's a brilliant biography, actually, you can read called, uh, by Charles Beauclerk, whose dad is currently the Duke of St Albans. It's very biased because he, he sort of talks about Nell Gwynne. Well, she clearly wasn't from the gutter. I think she was from a respectable family. <laughs> and it's like, as if, come on, you just admit it. And, um, <laughs> but but it's, an it's an incredible story. But her, her stage career was very short, actually. It was only about sort of six or seven years. It's um, quite good, though. But which is well, for our <laughs> if for you this think play, about people died really young. Yes, that's true. She died when she's about. In her she 30s, was thirty-six. That she's young. She's thirty-six, which mm. is the average age people died at in in the seventeenth century. Um, but um, yeah, she's a very good dancer apparently, and and uh, was very good at the comedy roles, but not so good at tragedy, which is uh, which we read up about, yes. or I certainly read up about in, in April as well. But um, casting the production. Yes. Um, has been a sort of extraordinary process because the age ranges. We're very, very lucky that, that our Nell... Nell Gwynne is 16 in the play, and um, Charlotte, who plays Nell Gwynne, is 17 next week, as she keeps reminding us all, <laughs> um, which has been extraordinary. And, um, but it really... But, it, but, but the youth and the sort of um, aura she brings with it is rather, I think, rather wonderful because you realise how young these these people were in that time going through some extraordinary things but um but i mean if we talk about, about the characters in the play or how yes. we, i yes. found them in rehearsal yes. or casting the, the amazing thing is and april's touched upon it is that in the 17th century life expectancy is only 36 uh or a little bit beyond the most amazing discovery i think we found when doing the play in relation to that is that uh, these women are very hard. They're very, very steely. They're very, very unsentimental. And being in a rehearsal room with five very strong-willed <laughs> ladies, um, they, they, bond, they bonded very brilliantly as a company. So they're very tactile with each other. They're very open with each other. But these women aren't necessarily in the play like that. And, and, and we found... I had to find... I had to keep reminding... Um, the actress, no, you mustn't be sentimental about this. And you know, you've know, got to remember, we can, if we have a headache, we can take a painkiller and everything's fine. These people couldn't. And so their pain threshold must have been hard. Their, their survival um, instinct was utterly ruthless. And, I, and I, think, I think April's tapped into that brilliantly. I think that, for me, is one of the, the best things about the play, is, is that these women, survival was so tough. In, I mean, in the 17th century, just just waking up and being alive was a miracle, actually, in those days. So, so to have a profession, and, and, and you know, you have to remember, if you weren't an actress in this time, you were either a wife or a servant, and that's or a prostitute, or a prostitute, and that's pretty much it. There was no other avenue open to you, and 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 actually. It, it, gosh, it, it wasn't till really, I, I, I'd argue, Mrs. Barry in the sort of 1700s, the late 1690s, so a good 20, 25 years after the action of Playhouse Creatures, that, 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 that people sort of stopped seeing actresses as whores. You know, well, I'd, I'd, I'd say or, they, maybe it was the 90s. I mean, it yes, went on. It's yes, always actually, kind of slightly tainted, the, yeah. hasn't it? There's always been a connection between 
two things. Yes. And um, the play kind of goes into that a bit. I don't want yes, to go say too, go much, too about much about it, but um, I think there's always been a. I mean, vagabonds, rogues and vagabonds, they were, all actors were in Shakespeare's time, weren't they? And uh, yes. there's a kind of. It's kind of stuck a little bit. And yeah. in terms of women's sexuality, I think just being on show. Is, is kind of gives is a, has a do, gives a dubious edge somehow. Yes. You're not supposed to be public. I mean, no. look, the Brontes weren't putting their names on their books, no, were that's they? True. It was still that's a slightly true. disgrace, you know. Yes, and all the pseudonyms. Actually, mm. Jane Austen as well wouldn't publish under her name for a while. So it's yes. it's, it's it's extraordinary how, how that how that's how that stuck. But we, but also our play, the play. The production's come at quite a current debate at the moment, which we weren't really expecting at all, in that in London, there are currently, uh, there are currently two all-male companies doing Shakespeare's plays. At Hampstead Theatre, there's Propeller, and at Shakespeare's Globe, there, um, Mark Rylance has come back again to do two productions. So, for example, we worked out as a company at Shakespeare's Globe Theatre this summer of the four main productions uh, in the plays, um, there's quite a few female roles because they're doing uh, Taming of the Shrew, Henry V, there's not many girls in that, but Henry V, um, Richard III, there are four brilliant parts in Richard III, and, um, and uh, Twelfth Night, which is three of the best female parts ever written. But because of the all-male productions, of all the actors they employed, and they'll probably have employed about 90 actors to do those four plays, or no, between around that with the parts, um, there'll be five females in that season, which it must be because the other female parts have been denied to women because they're being played by men. And at Hampstead Theatre, the two productions they're doing there are completely um, all male. So just when you think, you know, things have changed a little bit, you go, God, this is, this is amazing. But also to top that off, Equity, the Actors' Union, wrote to 43 subsidised theatres last month to say that you're not employing enough women, please give more parts to women. So it's very, it's it's amazing how current the play the play suddenly become. And in the in the, the there's been an amazing rehearsal room because there's been a lot of tears because actresses don't normally get the chance to play actresses. And and I mean they love it because you know they're like, am I too over the top? I'm like, no, you've got <laughs> license, you've got license to be actressy, enjoy it. So um they love it. And um but. But but some of the some of the the issue well most of the issues in the play really have hit home for the girls in in this production in a way sometimes they weren't expecting expecting it to and so it's been a pretty emotional um, rehearsal room sometimes but I think probably all the best ones are mm. really there was an, another thing there with the, I don't know if it came up in that discussion about how yeah. which is a kind of quite a well known kind of idea that there are, there isn't a King Lear for women so within the mm. canon and a classic works yeah. that actually women's careers tend to kind of stop at a certain yes. age whereas for men they might go on to play they've got That's this kind right. of jewel King Lear and a few older just, yeah. and also in King Lear there's fantastic <laughs> older male roles there's Gloucester isn't there Kent whatever but that, there isn't that kind of which Not is why Glenda Jackson stopped acting yes, she said well right. there's an I might as well, I'm going to go into politics because right. there's not really what, what, an act what, yes, for I've me now, I'm over. There. There's nothing exactly. more. Yeah. And what Janet Sisman's literally just released a book two weeks ago that, that argues probably the one role that is one that waiting for females is Cleopatra, but it's no way near as clear-cut as Antony as a role and it's no way near as... She argues in this book, as psychological as Lear or as great as Lear somehow, because the plays Antony and Cleopatra, and, and and it's a fascinating thing. So it feels very current at the moment in a way we weren't, perhaps we didn't expect it to be, which is which is lovely. So very very good. We're very lucky there. But um, I just thought we can't ask questions. People haven't seen the show. I know. <laughs> Normally I go, does anyone want to ask a question? I know. But um, yes. Oh, there are. Oh, a few. yes. What led you to choose this play? What made, made, Michael. made Michael? That's a really good question. Oh, really good question. Go on, Michael. Um, basically, uh, we, as a trainee here at, at Chichester, um, Jonathan Church and Alan, they're very much the focus here is go and assist some directors. And I've been very, very lucky to assist some incredible directors. And there's a lot of schemes to help you become a director as an assistant director and, and direct, help direct lots of people. But um, 
but they very much wanted the focus to be half on that and half on running a building because there's actually no training in this country to be an artistic director. And of course, theatre buildings need to be run in the future, hopefully, if theatre's still going. Um, and, and so uh, myself, Anna Ledwich, and Tim Hoare, who were the three trainees on this scheme, uh, Jonathan, before the Minerva was there, there was the Minerva tent. And um, I'm going to shamefully name drop now. Sam Mendes was a trainee here then and so he sort of launched his whole career in this tent um, doing sort of productions on the side to the main festival theatre and, um, and so Jonathan for the 50th anniversary wanted to revive the tent and said to the three of us you could do your own production but also I think you should learn how to budget plays, how to programme a season, how to do everything and Tim, the, 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 my colleague, he, he'd seen this group of architects called Assemble who um, who turn petrol stations into cinemas and, and, and all sorts of ingenious things. And, and he said, well, maybe we could get them to, to build a theatre and assemble only... Um, for example, so what you see here is the result of what they did. Every single nail has to be recycled. It's the condition. Every piece of material has to be able to be recycled or it is already cycled. The walls are pond liner. Uh, the upcycled pond liner. Um, all this wood is sustainable, and um, obviously the scaffold goes back to the scaffolding company. So they built this building, but what they wanted to do was um, they wanted to uh, do something with this theatre that you can't do in either of the auditoriums here, and so they built a fly tower. Uh, hence it's called Theatre on the Fly, but also Theatre on the Fly because it's only here for a short amount of time. They also wanted it to be part of the environment. So I don't know if anyone saw Blue Remembered Hills, but the doors were open and the backdrop was, was the field, the park at the back, which was just stunning. And, um, and basically we had to think of a play to do in, in this space. And, and, and I was having, with a fly tower, you think, gosh, what can you do with a fly tower? What can you do with ropes and pulleys and, and all this? And the interesting thing about the architects, they didn't... Um, they're not, they're not, never worked in theatre. So for them, it was all about painted backcloths, which is quite an old fashioned concept. But then I think, well, what play requires that? And I, my best friend from home had been in a drama school production of Playhouse Creatures that I'd seen at BAC years ago. And I, I remember talking to him going, if you're going to, if the whole point of this theatre is backstage being exposed, like the whole fly system, when we need to do a play which is backstage on stage, Playhouse Creatures in the 17th century, lots of backdrops, it's all women, it's Fun, it's a bit rude, I quite like that, and, 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 and all of this. And suddenly I thought, actually, this could be the one. And we had to present Jonathan Church with a few ideas, and as soon as I said Power Creature, went, yep, that's the one. So here we are. I'm very, very um, blessed that April's let us do it here and um, uh, in such a way. So we're very, very blessed. So that's a very long-winded way of saying <laughs> how I chose the play. Uh, yes, Jim. Did you... Um have you stayed within the 17th century or did you go into the 18th? Because there was a lot of Playhouse creatures and very famous ones. That actresses. Still there. Actresses, yes. Mm. And no. How, and how did you choose the actors? Because I was yes. trying to very cleverly guess which one might be in it. Oh, right. Uh, and none yes. of them are, so. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, you probably know more about it than I do. Well, because no, I, in those days, when you wrote a play, and the theatre company said, can you give us that play in three months? And I'd go, yeah. Because that's how you wrote plays then. You, there were small companies and you just... And I would spend six weeks doing the research, six weeks writing the play, and I'd give the play in. And um, with the play did subsequently have... Uh, I remember we, Sue's Parrish is here, the original director. And she, we did a workshop and it was rewritten. But the initial writing time was this, this three, three months. Uh, and I just... Um, it was just people that, you know, because the, the history is so sketchy anyway. I mean, a lot of the, some of the, the one of the prime sources is Samuel Pepys' diary, because he was always going to the theatre, he was loved the theatre, he was addicted to it, and he loved the actresses, and yes, he, he adored had, them. He had, um, he had um, a, a naked engraving of Nell Gwynn on his desk at the Admiralty. Yes. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, Sorry, so, so, no, no, but that's that's really useful. So, it's, but you know, that's how people. That's how you get information in a way. And I just, uh, and also you have a, a, a thing if you you've only got well, literally four actors. So in a way, four four of the cast are based on real people. Although Mrs. Beston, who's the older actress who is married to the company manager, there's enough. I mean, there's very little you can ever find out about her. Practically nothing. I mean, that I could ever find out. So it's, you use, it's an act of just recreation in a way, fictional recreation based on a few things. And then when I decided to put, I needed one more actor, I just made 
sort of found this name on a, on a flyer, an old flyer, Doll Common, which I then subsequently realised was a character from... The Alchemist. But I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> people, people think that I did, but I'm telling you I did. But anyway, <laughs> um, but, so, so it's, but even their lives, I mean, it's just... It, you are also trying to write a play. I just, and I was trying to get a kind of a generational... Nell, 16, Mrs. Betterton... Probably 50. Yes, all, I mean, yes, all, you know. our, all our actors in the company, we've got one in each decade across yes, the five. Yes, so that's probably the kind of way yeah. I was sort of, rather, you know, how can you be historically accurate about something? Nobody sat yeah. down and wrote these lies, wrote about this yeah. momentous thing of the first time women were allowed on the stage. Which you must know. have been incredible mm. to hear. Let me ask you about that. How did it happen? Who first put them Well, on Charles the stage II, and who'd been in the con- living uh, exile in the continent, hadn't yes. he? yeah. Uh, he'd he'd come back, obviously restoration, and he. There's a famous story. You probably have some things to say about this, but he yeah. said, um, "Why hasn't the play started?" And they said, "Oh, the Queen's still shaving." He said, "Oh, enough of this nonsense. Yes. Let's get yeah. women on to play instead of men play." So I mean, I don't. That might be apocryphal, but it's really yes, fun. It's very. Fun. I can imagine him saying that. Yes, absolutely. Didn't it come from France? As well? Yes, that's and where he'd been. Being, yes. That's right. His, his mother. His mother was French, and she, Henrietta Maria, and she she'd acted in court masks. And of course, that sort of genre, women, but they're private performances. So he, he sort of grew up with it around, I think, and especially on the, while, while he was in exile and also as a child. Um, but um, it, it, they don't even know who the actual first actress was. It's between Mrs. Betterton. It is Mrs. Betterton. <laughs> it, 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 we <laughs> think it's Mrs. Betterton. But, or Margaret Hughes. Yes, um, yeah. Who, um, mm. it's, it's one of those two. But I, I, I like to think it's Mrs. B, hopefully. Yes. I, I love this play, and I've actually performed in this play as Dull Common, oh. in the original one, well, what I thought was, what was the original it is, one, oh, wait, wait, five, wait, wait, um, no, I'm worrying about the extra bits you've added now, oh. <laughs> but um, we had a female director, and um, I absolutely really loved the writing, I loved the character of Dull Common, which we decided, as you say, it's a character in another play, but it's also a generic mm. character that's in a lot of plays of that time, yes. but could I ask Michael, as a male director directing women, not girls, <laughs> as a feminist, um, how do you feel you would have reacted, because we had a female director and it felt very right to have a female director yes. with an old female cast. Well, um, on the very first day of rehearsals, I put my hand up and I said, now listen, there's a lot of things I don't know about women because I'm not a woman. If I get it wrong, you must tell me. But, 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 but I sort of think you've just got to approach... People are people, aren't they? And you can't... You can't... You, you can't... I, I couldn't really worry about that too much. Um, I've, I have to say, I've learnt an extraordinary <laughs> amount about women... Uh, and uh, it's been incredible um, and I have learnt things I, I won't go into it now I can't repeat them but, um, but no, I, I was very conscious of it because obviously this play uh, an element of this play is about female bodies and the expression of female bodies and, and females expressing their bodies and, and I, I was quite conscious I never, when, you, when I talked about it I, I I was so conscious, you mustn't, you've got to just... I found it difficult, quite frankly. I did find that element of it quite difficult. But, um, but, you, but I, as I said, I just had to say to them, look, if I get it wrong, please tell me. And I'm, I'm, fully, I'm fully up for you shouting at me and saying, how dare you say that? Um, it never happened, actually, touch wood, um, which, was very, which was very good. But, but also, they're just, such, they're just such wonderful creations. And I love the fact that the play... Is about women so much, and 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 the generational thing, and and but for me it wasn't for me actually for me it wasn't really a play about women. It's a play about generation, ge- generational divide. So that's how I approached it. I, I sort of didn't, yeah. For, that's for me what it was about. I think people. It's a. It's such a brilliant play. I think people will glean from it what they will. But I was just conscious. My job as a director is to tell the story as best as I possibly could. But also, so I haven't gone in, I don't think I've gone in with an angle or, or anything. But, but for me, the interesting thing was about the generational thing. For me, it's about, I might be wrong here, but I remember saying this to you actually, the first time we met. For me, it's about fighting the fight 
as a as a sort of as an as a generation or any point in your life fighting the fight and then someone younger than you or with less experience coming along and you you can't live the fruits and and like it's like the suffragette if someone if someone says to me now did you vote no i go mad because and like people died to get you the right for that vote and even though those people didn't ever get the vote at least they fought the fight for you and and for me that's what the core of this play is about they perhaps some characters in it don't get to live live what they fought for and and were utterly utterly lived for but at least you know every day in rehearsals we were we sat down and we went thank you mrs betterton mrs this mrs that because without you we wouldn't be in this room today and so that for me was what the play was about rather than uh, thinking of it um from a from a you know male uh, female um angle because i there, i just knew there's stuff i wouldn't know <laughs> Um, what you were saying earlier about actresses being regarded as prostitutes and every prostitute wife, servant, whatever, I would say that probably some actresses, and should we call them actresses or actors yeah. now... I love the word uh, actresses. I know you should yeah. use the word yeah. actors, but yeah. I, I, I don't know why. I'm always very some fond of it. Yes. But, but, but should, I know that people do like to be called yeah, actors. But, should, um, but some would still say now that, again, they're either the bimbo, the prostitute... And then they have to become a character actor because there's not the roles of an mm. interesting person who's in their 40s, who's mm. not a character actress and not, not mm. the glamorous one. Mm. And, and it's the, the fight is still going on. Well, that's why we have to still do this, yes. this play. Oh, yeah. We have to absolutely yeah. keep doing it. Can, can, I, can I ask this lady, would you think if there's an all-male play that should be directed by men? I would think it would be interesting. I've done another play called Lear's Doctors, which was for the Women's Theatre Group, and we had a male director for that and a man in it, and that was... It just felt it gave a different nuance to lots of the scenes. Um, there are so many plays that are all men and directed by men. I think there's not enough that are all women directed by women, to be honest. I think we need to try and balance it. I just oh, 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 sorry, I just saw someone's hand up over there. Sorry, we'll come back to you, Wendy. It's me. Yes, hi. hi. Oh, hi, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Glass and cross. I'm just listening to someone who isn't involved in theatre. I've seen theatre this year, and there were some really strong female parts this year. I saw The Way of the World, and strong female parts in that. And I thought it was changing anywhere. Because, you know, I'm not involved in your business. Lady just saying she she was um she thinks there's a growing number of female roles in this theatre in um just some some of the plays we programmed this season there have been some great roles for women so far which is which is very true which is great. Yeah. I'll just ask you yeah. um, in your forward yeah. for the play because I didn't quite clarify well, how this works. For the first time, women are allowed to set foot on the stage as long as the words are accompanied by a flash of flesh. Is that what they felt, or is that... What's that well, how did that work? Uh, well, <coughs> have you seen the production? No, I haven't yet? seen it. Oh, well, you'll sort of find out <laughs> in the production. <laughs> it it's, wasn't a requirement. Thing. Uh, but, but, what, it? but, but, it's, but what did the audience pay to come and see? And that's what the play starts uh, questioning. hearing you talk about you writing the play and your take on the play. What I was wondering, you've got a very strong and positive take on this play. You know exactly what you think it's about. But that, that's how it comes yeah, out yeah, to me. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen yeah, I haven't yeah, it yet. Sure. Um, and do you have exactly the same take? What happens when or do you mm. sit back and let yeah. the director and you go, yes, that's right. Yes. Well, it's just a question then? about writer, director, how, you know, as a writer, do you have exactly the same take as a director or... Um, Who's the one that gives way? Yes. <laughs> well, I think, you know, as... I personally, if, you're, if it's a new play, it's the first time it's ever been on, there's a really strong negotiation going on between a writer and director because you're working together to put something on for the first time and you're discovering it as a writer as well. But I think with what happens down the line, like 20 years later, um, 
you feel the play has to be strong enough to stand on its own without you babying it in a way. And I mean, I know Michael said he, he did look at some other versions and ask if he could put some other, but actually it's the play, it's really yeah, the first it's version. It's not a, you know, and, and so, and I think it has to stand on its own and you have to allow other people to come in and have a look at it. And um, I, th I, well, I suppose I think it's a slightly, uh, a lament for, it's about women being in control of their own lives and their, their own rep representations of themselves, really. I think that's what, the, I suppose that's what it's about for me and how much has that really changed? It's that question, you know. Are we really, how are we represented? Is that what we're happy with? Um, what does it mean to represent a woman on a stage? And all those kind of questions are still important. I mean, I think you're right, things are really are changing, but, uh, the fact that there's still a debate about, you know, parts for women, and this is like 400 years later. I mean, we wouldn't be having that debate if it wasn't somehow still alive for us. Do you know what I mean? Or how, how, however much it's changed. Mm. Oh, the what, love? No, the past hasn't. But, it, but as, are you, if you write a play, you can't just be writing it in a way. You're asking yeah. about the present in a way. But I, I mean, think... Yeah. Sorry, did you, have, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to ask about when you wrote this play first in 93. Yes. I, I'm just thinking, was it The Libertine uh, by Stephen Jeffries? Was it The Royal Court? That was after this play. Oh, after yeah. Yes. Right, okay. so do you Way think, after. And then, <laughs> and then State of Beauty as well. That was Richard after, Air, yeah. Which was after. It just seems, do you feel like you inspired a whole generation yes. of players? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, those questions are really tricky, you know, because people, where do people get their ideas from? You can't ever go and say, well, that's a bit like my, you know, they're, 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 I think people inspire each other and, but they have the right to go and try their own way of doing something. So, um, but it's also an absolutely fascinating period of history because it was so reactionary. It was only really the rest, the burst of the restoration was 10 years. Um, the core of it, because if you look at those plays that were written in the 1660s, like The Country Wife, the, the, the genre we call we call so many plays restoration comedies when they're not uh, restoration comedies is only a sort of little burst of plays and plays that sort of happened at the time of William and Mary and Queen Anne that everyone calls restoration comedies technically aren't because they're 30 years after the restoration so so that sort of there was a brilliant program on recently about women in the restoration and Lucy Worsley the historian at the end of it said the restoration was a blip for the opportunities it offered women. It was a blip in time as a reaction to Puritanism and, and everything went on and, and, and all these discoveries that are being made in the Restoration. But what an exciting blip it was. And things died down a bit, but, but, it, but it was certainly very exciting. But just to quickly link that back, this play really isn't about 1660s. And I've always said that in rehearsal. We're actually doing a play that's about today. But the vehicle is the path to make us think about it, in some respects. What do you think, April? Well, I'm just <laughs> saying, but, it's, but also history is so... Is, I mean, the well, fact yeah. that it was hidden from history. I mean, yeah. when I, you know, I'd done an English degree, I'd been an actress. And when somebody said to me, I want you to write the first English actress, I thought, what are you talking about? The first English... Oops. <laughs> I'd never, it never even crossed my mind that women... I knew that women weren't allowed on the stage in Shakespearean times. And then I knew that later on there were Sarah Bernhardt and... But there was just like a mist in between that I'd never even asked myself, which I think is the power of ideology. You don't even ask the question. Or, and I think, but I, so I think history in itself is valuable for what it was as well, because it's saying, sort of, why didn't we know about this? Why don't, didn't we care about these women? What does it mean to us that we don't know their names or all of us, not just women? And when it's our history, you know, in a way. Uh, so that was, so I think it is, it's about that as well as all those questions about how things have changed and are those, because as, you know, Michael was saying, you know, the act, some of the actors were upset about the life of, of an actress now and <laughs> now in this play that they got, they, when they were acting it, so. Yeah. I don't know, I haven't got a watch, I don't know how much time we've oh, spent. We might, we might, the actress might be coming on now. <laughs> yes, they might want to. Do you want a loo break? Time for two or three more. Oh, two or three more, if yes. anyone's got a question. Uh, oh, it's you. Just go, uh, Quick question. There was a really good review in the Daily Telegraph. Congratulations. Um, but he described it as a new play. <laughs> Do you think that's a good thing? Uh, well, Any good review is good. Any good. 
I'll, I'll take anything. I, I haven't actually really read it properly because I'm trying not to read anything about it. <laughs> but but, but um, I've, I've skimmed it. I've skimmed it, but I haven't actually sat down and read it. But I, I, I'm... I, I, I think it's good. I don't know. Well, no, 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 actually. I quite... What I love about this play in itself is it has a brilliant production history and that people... It gets put on all the time, which is great, and that people connect to it and people... And that it's evolved and, and, and that it changes and, you know, sometimes Mrs Barry's in it, sometimes... I, I sort of love that because it keeps it alive. And so, so, it, so in a way, it, it, it sort of... I, I mean, I, I'd love... Yeah, I, I think it's... I, I'm not sure it's a good... I don't know, I'm getting I mean, it's twisted not, now. Well, it's, it's good in the way that it's, it yes, feels that people, new. Yes, exactly. But then it's like, um, maybe people won't believe the review because it's... <laughs> yes. That's like, it praises the play because she doesn't know anything. She doesn't know yes, that it's 20 years old. So I was like torn between those two. <laughs> no, I know that's what you think, isn't it? Really, yeah. Really, really. It's a new version. Well, it's got well, a new speech really. in it. Yeah. yeah, a new speech. I was just going to ask if each night is a bit of a void of discovery of your actresses. You know, are they still discovering? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, just a question about discovering other actors in it, discover, actors or actresses in it. I'm scared now. Um, <laughs> of, um, uh, so I say actresses, and actresses. I should say actors, but uh, I just I know, like it. Hard, isn't it? Um, yes, they do. I mean, it changed an awful lot during preview, and um, I'm usually, I'm, I usually can't let things go as a director, and you, you, you sort of sit on your hands and go, oh, gosh, I need to rehearse that and call them all in. But they're so... I think they're brilliant. Um, um, they're just amazing and and so I, I just sort of remember sitting after the first review going I just have to trust them that even though I'm not happy with that bit yet they will discover it and they'll probably discover it much better than with me me sort of trying to rehearse it and in fact two three performances in something I really wanted to happen that had never happened before and that I'd never talked to them about suddenly happened and and it's now there and it's just sort of evolved and and so that's that's great, but but it's also how the audience respond to it. I mean, any play about theatre is is um, you know, the theatricality of it of this play and being in a theatre is quite present. I think at points, you know, there's direct address to the audience and at, at various moments, and and so how your audience respond that that evening is also they also discover things and they discover rhythms. I mean, there's a few bits where. They're quite conscious. They're not getting. They thought I thought I get a response on that line, and and I'm like, well, it's it's fine that you don't, you know. And um, but yeah, it's um, it, it, it they really and it being in the moment as well. I think the best productions or, or actors are actors who don't act but react. You know, if one night if one night you're on stage and someone shouts at you, you have to react to what they've done. You can't just do the performance you did last night. So, um, so you know, however your co-star plays it, you have to respond to that rather than to try and fit it back in. So there are little moments. What challenges does this space give you? Uh, because I can space, hear there's a lot of outside noise. And there is a, there is a lot of outside noise that dies down. Seeing a matinee of this is very different from seeing an evening hugely different from seeing an evening if the sun's out obviously it's a little bit different from when the sun's in um but actually we really like the space it's 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 um it's quite deceptive you have to really project in this space um because it's deceptive you think it's a small but alex who plays mrs betterton has played sort of every incredible um part at the rsc she played juliet Olivia Rosalind um, and, and she says at, in the Royal Shakespeare Theatre and when she came in here and we started doing voice work she was like gosh it's like being in the old RST I have to project but then my audience is so close and it's such a small audience so it's getting a, getting a balance between getting to every single person in every bit but not making your performance massive because you're not on a huge stage so it's, it's the negotiation of that that that's the most difficult thing about this space. And it's only been open for a month. So we're discovering things about it as each new production comes in or each new event happens. Um, so, um, yeah. And the light's but, lovely here. The light's The way lovely, it works, because yeah. it gets dark like it would have done in a... Yeah. Am I giving something away? No, not at, at all. That's okay. Not at all. <laughs> I just only thought we could have it. No, no. You know, it gets, it's lovely, that, isn't it? Is it is great. It's magical that it gets dark. It with the, mm. Exactly. But if, I was just thinking about, thinking about actors and actresses. If we said 
this is a his, this plays about the first English actors. We wouldn't understand what it was about. Yeah. It's really interesting, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. You have to say the first female actors or the first actors, which is a kind of mm. conundrum because, mm. in a way, we're all you know. Anyway, yeah. I'll just drop that in. No, it's good. I mean, yeah. I just just wanted to, with your work going to the Duke of York's in, in the heart of the West End. I wondered if you felt that all of a sudden you were kind of being embraced by the establishment in a way that you might not I have I wish. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might not have been up to that. Might not have felt you to be. Right. I don't know. I mean, it's always good. It's always lovely if a play has a life. I mean, I don't know what the... I mean, I've just been reading the diary, Simon Gray's diaries, which are really wonderful. Diaries, the year of smoking diaries. I mean, he was embraced by the establishment. And then he felt he was spat out again. And his last books were like his lament against being... So what that means, really, anyway, or how long for, or... I, I, I don't know whether that's... You should focus on it too much anyway and just kind of get on with... It's about doing the work, isn't it? Yeah, I, it's just great that more people can, can, can see it. That, oh, what, if a play goes into yeah, it? Yeah, I yes, think so. Tw- yeah, that's good. Everyone go and see Jump It. <laughs> so, yeah. Tickets are on sale. I've got yeah. them. <laughs> got them in her bag. I'd never l- I'd look up an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> I'd look an opportunity. And, and my last question, if there was something that you both wanted to whisper into the ears of the audience just going in tonight, maybe, Take what a drink. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, no, no, it's best not to do that, yeah. is it? Because it might take them down the wrong, feel a bit like, yeah. no. It's very funny, lots of my friends said, oh, I'll read the play before I said, no, I said, absolutely not. This is one of those plays you mustn't read before you see it if you don't know it, because it's just, you know, mm. if, if you haven't come across it before, I think it's a, a great, a great um, discovery to go along with it. When it's very good, even however well you know it, or if you read it before, a good play. Oh, absolutely, but there's nothing, but sometimes, you know, plays are meant to be performed, so it's just wonderful, isn't it, when you haven't engaged with anything at all, and, and I think, anyway, of course, yeah. other people will, will differ. I think there's the joy in, 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 in just discovering it as it goes along, and then, and then you love it, then you discover it, you rediscover it again, but it means something different, it's and I love different. that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much to April and Michael.